So, this lecture is about uh, the pericardial disease. The pericardial disease is a very important disease because many times you can give a complete cure to the patients. But at the same time, this pericardial disease is going to mimic certain other diseases so that it is very, very important to differentiate a potentially curable disease to a disease which is not uh, curable. So, that is what the pericardial disease is important. So, before that we must understand the normal pericardium. The normal pericardium may be divided into fibrous pericardium and serous pericardium. And serous pericardium has got two layers, visceral layer as well as the parietal layer and the small potential space in between the visceral layer and the parietal layer is the one which accommodates a small amount of fluid less than 50 ml of fluid for lubrication and the pericardial fluid is as you can see that the, the gap between the visceral and parietal pericardium you have 50 ml of fluid and it has got a ligamentous attachment to the sternum in the front vertebral column at the back and the diaphragm in the uh, in inferior side. So, it has got the front, back and inferior attachment. So, this is how we can understand the pericardium. So, the fibrous, the tough fiber outer layer is called the fibrous pericardium. Then the two layers of the visceral, visceral pericardium, the two layers of the serous pericardium. The outer layer is called parietal serous pericardium and the inner layer is visceral serous pericardium. So, you have a small space, a potential space exists between visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium which houses 50 ml of fluid which helps for the lubrication of the heart. So, there are four important functions of the pericardium. It gives the heart a stability so that when the heart is constantly contracting and relaxing, it cannot be just wobbling inside your thorax. So, it gives the stability of the heart through its ligamentous attachment which I explained in the previous slides. Then it gives the protection of the heart from the mechanical trauma from outside as well as infection from the adjoining structures. Then the fluid, 50 ml of fluid which is in the pericardial cavity is going to act as a lubricant and decreases the friction of cardiac surfaces. And of course, when you give, let us say you have infusing 5 liters of fluid, the heart cannot excessively dilate because there is a pericardial restraint which does not allow the heart to have excessive dilatation. So, the diseases which are going to affect the pericardium are acute pericarditis, constrictive pericarditis and pericardial effusion and pericardial effusion can go to a complication of cardiac tamponade.